Well, good morning, friends. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. My name is Pastor Ricardo Finn, and um, I'm the pastor at FCI Rayma Family Church here in Newcastle, Northern Natal. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting us into your home this morning. We are so glad and honored, and honored to have you join us this morning. I want to encourage you this morning, get some communion emblems as we're going to have communion at the end of the broadcast. Um, if you don't have, that's completely fine. Um, grab a Mari biscuit, grab a, uh, you know some bread or even water, doesn't matter. But, um, we're going to share the table of the Lord together this morning. And um, I want to encourage you at this point to get your Bible, get a pen, get a notebook as we're going to share God's precious word and grab a cup of coffee as you join us this morning. Hallelujah. Now, before we begin, I think it will only be proper if we open up this morning's broadcast in the word of prayer. Father, we thank you this morning for another awesome and wonderful privilege, O oh God, to Lord God, to engage with your word. Thank you, Lord, for the preaching and the teaching of your word. Thank you for your word, which has been inspired by you, which has been breathed, O oh Lord God, by you. I thank you, Lord, that as we share your word this morning, that faith will come, Lord God, to every person that is under the influence of this broadcast. I pray that you'll touch, O oh Lord God, and transform lives this morning in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I thank you this morning, O oh God, that where two or more are gathered, there you are in the midst of them. Father, we've gathered in your name this morning, in the name of Jesus, and I thank you that you are with each and every person that is connected with us this morning. In your precious name, Father, I thank you. We give you praise, glory, honor, and all the worship. In your precious name, O oh Lord, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, praise God. Welcome this morning, family. <clears throat> thank you so much for joining us. It is so awesome to share the word of God. Now this morning, I want to talk to you about fighting the good fight. You know, as believers, as Christians, we are constantly in a fight, but it is a good fight. It's not a bad fight. It is a, it is a good fight and it is worth it. Believe you me, it is worth it. And, um, you know, God has um, given each one of us an assignment and God has a wonderful destiny and a wonderful plan with each and every one of our lives and um, in in the pursuit of our god-given destiny and our god-given assignment there will be many challenges and obstacles that we encounter and that is the wrestling and the fighting that uh, we are engaged in in the book of ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12 the apostle paul writes this to the ephesian church and he writes this to you and i this morning he says for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Wow. Against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. The Passion Translation puts it like this. It says, your hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. The Bible tells us that, you know, God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. That's what the Bible says. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places so the blessings that god has blessed us with is in heavenly places in the realm of the spirit there's so much blessings so much that god has in store for us as children of god and you know when you look at the word of god you see all those blessings you see the promises that god has it's unlimited It's an unlimited supply of what God has for us. And it's all in heavenly places. And as a child of God, God has spoken word over your life. He's spoken word over your life. In the beginning 
of the Bible, the very first chapter in the book of Genesis chapter number one, we read how the earth was void, it was empty, it had no form. That could be your life this morning. When you look at your life, you just see emptiness, you see dryness, you see barrenness, you see brokenness. I don't know what it is that, that you see. Or it's probably just empty, it's just void. And you find maybe there's just no purpose. But understand this, that if you go to the Word of God, there's a promise here that God has for you. There's a promise that God has for every circumstance, for every situation in your life. That if you go to the Word and you just receive the Word, that Word is a Word that's spoken over you, spoken over your circumstance. And the Spirit of God, you're not alone. The Spirit of God is with you. The Spirit of God is dwelling on the inside of you. The Spirit of God is moving all over. And the Spirit of God will bring that Word to pass. Praise God. So whatever it is, whatever the situation this morning, it could be sickness. Go look for a scripture concerned with healing. It could be lack. Go and look for a scripture that speaks about provision, the provision of God, the providence of God. And take the word of God. Take it. Claim it. Lay a hold of it. Allow it to enter your heart. And you begin to speak that word. And as you do so, you are speaking into the atmosphere. And you'll find all of a sudden, things will change in your life by the word of God. Watch what uh, um, Paul says here. In um, Let's go to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter number 1. We just read now, before I go there, let me just finish this quickly um, you know Paul here says that this class that we are wrestling against is a class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage the world that we are in friend is full of darkness the world is full of darkness, but we have abiding within us Jesus Christ, who is the true light of the world. So in spite of us, in spite of us being in a dark world, we have a light within us that shines. And that light is Jesus Christ. And the word of God is our light. So as we take the word of God, we begin to shine in this dark world. And those, those demonic forces, those demonic spirits that we wrestle against, they are in the spiritual realm. And they are in rebellion to what God has spoken concerning your life. God speaks good. So what do they do? They try and withhold that good. They try and resist it. But you too, have a role to play. You can either allow it to happen or you can say enough is enough and you put your foot down and you say, I'm not going to tolerate that. I'm going to take the word of God. I'm going to make sure, I'm going to hold on to the word of God. I'm going to bind myself to the promises of God. I'm going to loose myself from the lies of the enemy and I'm going to bind myself to the truth of God's word. I'm going to hold on to the word until the word comes to pass. Hallelujah. Now, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, Paul speaks to Timothy in verse 18. He says, So Timothy, my son, I'm entrusting you with this responsibility. You see, we've got a responsibility here. He says, I'm trusting you with this responsibility in keeping with the very first prophecies that were spoken over your life. You see, whatever God spoke over your life, you are being entrusted with something here. He says, I'm entrusting you with this responsibility in keeping with the very first prophecies that were spoken over your life and are now in the process of fulfillment in this great work of ministry. Hallelujah. Understand this. The word that God spoke over your life is in process 
of fulfillment. It's in process of fulfillment. It is coming to pass. Praise God. And he says in this great work of ministry, we have each and every child of God has been called to the ministry. The ministry is not a pulpit that you go stand behind and preach. It's the ministry of reconciliation, whereby as if God is pleading through us to humanity to be reconciled to him. You see, God speaks a word over your life so that you know, when that word comes to pass, the glory is God's. It is a glorious thing that happens. So when people behold and they see the glorious thing that God does in your life, it prompts them. It prompts them to ask, how can this be? And that's how you share the gospel with them. And you tell them, it is not my doing. It is not my ability, but it's the grace of God. It is it is God, it is Him Himself, it is His glory that is manifesting in my life. Wow, praise God, hallelujah, praise God. So he says here, in the, that these words are now in the process of fulfillment in the great work of ministry, in keeping with the prophecy spoken over you. He goes on to say this, with this encouragement, with this encouragement that the word is coming to pass, he's encouraging you now. There's a word that has been spoken over you, and this word is in the process of fulfillment. He says, with this encouragement, use your prophecies, use the word as weapons, as you wage spiritual warfare by faith and with a clean conscience. You see? So, in spite of what you see, Take the word of God and use the word of God as a weapon. The word of God is a weapon to us. Hallelujah. And we've got to use the word of God in our warfare, in, the, in our daily walk with God. We've got to use, the, the Bible says the word of God, it is a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged sword. Praise God. So you use the word of God and you wage a good warfare in your life. It doesn't matter what the enemy says. You take the word of God and as you speak it, as you speak it, that's where the power is. That's where the power is. When you're declaring what God has said, the Bible, brothers and sisters in Christ, the Bible is truly the inspired word of God. This word, this word, this book, it's not an ordinary book. This is a revelation of God. This is where God reveals himself unto man. It's through the word of God. If I were to put it this way, the promises that are contained in the word of God, it's a blank checkbook. The Bible is an open checkbook that God has given unto us. It's like somebody that takes, you know, they've got a bank account that is loaded. It's loaded and they take the checkbook and they sign every check. Every check is signed. It's already signed, but it's blank. And that person gives it to you and says, this is a checkbook. Use it now. So that's what the word of God is. That's how, that's the promises. Any promise that God has spoken in his word, it's an open checkbook unto anybody that is willing to take the word of God and appropriate it by faith. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So it doesn't matter what your situation may look like. It doesn't matter what your circumstances may be this morning. But I want to encourage you, friend, that your situation can change. Your, circum your circumstances can change purely by you going to the Word of God and seeing what God says about your situation. Go to the Word of God, whatever it is. It could be a sickness. Go and look for a promise on healing. It could be lack. Go and look on a promise of God's provision, of God's providence. And you take that word and you hold on to it. Because I'm telling you, friend, this morning, that whatever God says in his word, he will do. He will do it. He's a God who's a performer of his word. Praise God. Whatever God's mouth has spoken, whatever the mouth of God has spoken, his hands are able to perform for you. The verdict of man, the verdict of man is fallible, but the verdict of God is infallible. Man's word can change. 
God's word never changes. It stands established for all eternity. The word of God. Hallelujah. What I'm trying to tell you this morning is that Jehovah God has the final say. Don't let your circumstances dictate to you. Don't let your situation determine to you how far you can go or how high you can go or what you can achieve or what you are entitled to. I'm here to tell you this morning that God has the final say. God has the final word and it's not over until God says that it is over. God is not a man that he should lie and he's not a son of man that he should repent. Praise God. Hallelujah. If God has said it, he will make good on it. That's my word to you this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You could be someone watching me this morning. You could be a woman that's married. You could be a married couple and you are barren. And you know, the doctors could have said that you'll never bear children. You know, when you go to the word of God, God says in his word, you'll be the father of many nations. That's a promise that's in the word of God. I'm here to tell you that God will open your womb. Hallelujah. What man says is impossible, God says it is possible. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what the medical report says about your condition. Amen. It doesn't matter. Let me tell you, what, whatever the doctor said, it's subject to change. It is subject to change. Hallelujah. The word of God will change it. The word of God will override that diagnosis. They may say that there's no cure for it, but I'm here to tell you there's a cure. The cure is the word of God. In the book of Isaiah chapter 3, I want to share this with you this morning. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. The word of God says in the book of Isaiah chapter number 3 and verse 10, he says, Say to the righteous that it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doing. Say to the righteous, and that's you this morning, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He says, Say to the righteous, it shall be well with them, and they shall eat the fruit of of their labor hallelujah why are you letting the media reports confuse you hallelujah by telling you that there's no job anywhere why are we letting the media control us why are we letting the media and the tabloids tell us that oh listen there are no jobs anywhere let me tell you we serve a god who opens doors you can rise up this morning locate god's will in his precious word concerning your situation and begin to claim it for yourself lay a claim let me tell you you are not standing you may be standing on this earth standing in this world but you are standing on something that is bigger than this world you're standing on the promises of God. You are standing on the word of God. The word of God establishes you. The word of God will, will cause you to rise above your situation. The word of God will cause you to rise above your challenges. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. So this morning, that's my word to you this morning. Rise up. Locate the word. God's wolf concerning your life in his word and stand on that word and begin to claim the word of God for yourself. Hallelujah. Let me tell tell you something brothers and sisters situations will never change situations do not move until you forcefully speak the word of God over them your situation will not change unless you begin to forcefully speak the word of God over your situation. The Red Sea that Moses and the nation of Israel stood before, the Red Sea did not part until Moses stretched forth his hand over it. You see, when Moses stretched forth his hand over the Red Sea, he was exercising his God-given authority. I'm here to tell you this morning that you can stand. You may be standing by the sea. I don't know what it is that you are standing before, but you can rise up, take the word of God and speak it over your circumstance. Begin to act. Let the word of God have the final say over your situation. You'll see the waters part. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Your situation will change, friends, when you begin to speak with authority over your situation. Don't let your situation dictate to you. Don't let that sickness tell you that you cannot rise up from that bed. Don't let that, don't let the pain tell you that you cannot walk. Let me tell you something. When Jesus said to the man, rise up and walk. It was a word, a spirit word that connected with the spirit of the man and the man considered not his circumstance. The man looked away from his circumstance and he looked to the one that's able to change his circumstance. It's the word of God that will change your circumstance. I don't care what man has said. He may have said you'll never do it, but God says you can.
can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Praise God. Hallelujah. Begin to command situations and circumstances in the name of Jesus to bow down to you. And as you do, your victory is established in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Begin to command the situations and circumstances to change. Command it in the name of Jesus to bow to you. And as you do so, friend, your victory is established in Jesus' name. There's power in the name of Jesus. Praise God. The only language that the devil understands is the language of force. You see, when Satan comes, he comes to steal. If you... If you are holding something that belongs to you and someone steals it from you, they steal it for, it's, it's like someone coming to take something by force from you. You're not going to let that person take it. No. The only language that Satan understands is the language of force. So you've got to speak to your mountains forcefully and command them to disappear in Jesus' name. Speak with authority to those mountains. Be, you must command it to leave. Praise God. Command it to leave. Look at Jesus when he was tempted by Satan. He said, get behind me, Satan. You understand? You must show him his place. He's behind you. God said you're the head and you're not the tail. You'll be above and above only, not below. Glory, hallelujah. You've got to use the infallible word of God to wage a good warfare against the challenges that you face in your life. Whatever what you want, whatever you want in your life, you don't just watch. You don't just watch. You see, when, when it comes to prophecies, when it comes to promises that God has given unto us, you don't watch it. You use it to wage a warfare. That is what Paul said to Timothy. He didn't say, um, Timothy, remember the prophecies that were spoken over you. Watch them. He said, no. After having received this encouragement that I've given you, Take the word, take these words of prophecy and begin to wage a good warfare. That's what you do. The word of God will work for you if you use it to war with it. Use it and war with it. It's a battle axe. You go into battle with the word of God. Look at David when he stood before Goliath. Look at him. He said, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the Lord God of Israel. I come to you in his name. You understand that? Hallelujah. Life, my dear friend, my dear brother, my dear sister, life does not give you what you deserve, but what you demand. Life doesn't give you what you deserve. Life gives you what you demand. You've got to place a demand. Place a demand on the ability of God. Place a demand on the word of God. Begin to speak to your mountains and declare what God has said. Tell your mountain what God says. Don't let your mountain dictate to you. Don't let your Goliath dictate to you. You tell them what God says. Hallelujah. And as you do so, your victory begins to be established in Jesus' name. Don't believe men. Don't believe the word of man. Believe God. God, believe the word of God. God has the final say in your life. Hallelujah. God has the final say. You've got to be like the men of old, where you say, let every man be a liar and let God be true. Let every man be a liar and let God be true. Hallelujah. If you listen to the opinions of people, you will never make it in this life. There's nobody Whoever listened to the opinion of man and ever made it to the top. The opinion of God is greater. Don't listen to the opinion of man. Because you must understand, the enemy speaks through people. He speaks through people to attack your destiny. He speaks through men to implant fear into your heart. That is what the enemy is after. He's after your destiny. He doesn't want you to get to where God wants you to be. So he'll speak through people. That's why you, you, you don't listen to the opinion of men. You go to the word of God and see what God says. 
Because if you listen to the opinion of men, they're going to tell you, you can't do it. They're going to tell you, it can never be done. They're going to tell you, you're going to fail. They're going to tell you, oh no, you can't because there's a list of reasons why you can't do it. Or they'll tell you how great and how difficult it is trying to implant fear into you. Trying to tell you, oh, you're going to be embarrassed when you fail. Hey, so what? If God said it, that settles it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because the enemy wants to implant fear in your heart so that he can make you doubt the plans and the purposes that God has for your life. Hallelujah. And he'll make sure you don't move forward because he doesn't want you to move forward. He wants you to remain exactly where you are. But you've got to resist him. You've got to take up the word of God and you've got to fight. Praise God. You only listen to what God has said. Hallelujah. God, Whatever God says, it is a commandment. It cannot change. It doesn't matter what man says. If God said it, God will change it. Praise God. So sit down with the word of God today. Locate the truth of God's word. Locate the promise in the truth of God's word. And begin to allow the word of God to elevate you above your circumstances. Hallelujah. God said in his word that you will excel. God said in his word that you will be the head and not the tail. God said in his word that he will never leave you nor will he forsake you. Surely everything that God has said concerning your life will come to pass. There are so many treasures that are that are wrapped up in this word. This word is a gift. It's a gift from God, the creator of the universe. Spoke to holy men of old to write down his word. They were moved by the Spirit of God to write down the Word of God. God wrapped up this Word. He wrapped it. This is His gift to you and I. For you to take the gift of His Word and open and see the wonderful treasures that God has laid up in His Word for you. So that as you, as you find them, as you find them, you can begin to change your life. And begin to bring order, shape, and structure to your life. So that you'll be established on the rock-solid foundation of the truth of God's word. My prayer this morning is that God will give you the grace to locate every promise that he has for you, for your life. So that you can live this overcoming, abundant life that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to give. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This morning, I just want us to share at the table of the Lord as we go. I want to share with you quickly from the book of Corinthians. Corinthians chapter number 11, 1 Corinthians 11, verse number 23, the Apostle Paul says, For I receive from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. I received. You see, I was just sharing with you how men of God, men of old, received the word of God and delivered his word to us. What an awesome gift. Paul sharing now also something he received. He says, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this morning for the bread that we break. That it becomes for us, O Lord God, the very body of your Son, Jesus Christ. In the words of Christ, unless we eat the flesh of the Son of God and drink his blood, we have no life in us. So we thank you this morning, O God, 
that as we eat, O Lord God, this bread, we eat life. Christ Jesus is the bread of life. As we drink, O Lord God, of this cup, the blood of Christ Jesus, we remember that we are in covenant with you. And we thank you that every promise that you've given unto us has been ratified by the blood of Jesus. So Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning for your body and for your blood which were given for us. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Let us take of the Lord's body. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. For without blood there is no remission. The life of all flesh is in the blood. So we thank you for, for life this morning. By virtue of the blood, we have new life. By virtue of the blood, we have eternal life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I trust that you are blessed this morning. Please write to us. Share with us what God is doing in your life. Send us your prayer requests. We love to hear from you. We pray for you often. Hallelujah. The details are appearing on the screen. So as we leave this morning, I just want to... Um, just offer you an opportunity. Perhaps you don't know the Lord Jesus, or perhaps you once served the Lord and you went astray, but you want to make things right with God this morning. If that's you, I want you to say the simple prayer of faith with me. And once you've prayed it, write to us. The details are appearing on your screen. We'd love to connect with you and share with you the Word of God so that you can grow. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your precious word. Thank you according to your word. If I shall confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with all of my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Right now, Lord Jesus, I open the door of my heart to you. I ask you this morning to come into my life. I invite you and receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. I thank you, Jesus, for the blood you shed for me at Calvary's cross. I receive right now your free gift of eternal life. From this moment on, I declare that I'm born again. I'm a child of the living God. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, praise God. If you pray that prayer, congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. I want to encourage you, wherever you are, find a local church where you can connect with and you can begin to grow in your newfound faith in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, as we close off the program, I want you to stretch your hands towards the screen as I release the final blessing. Father, I thank you for every person that has joined us this morning. I thank you, Lord, for the impartation of your grace and the impartation of your word this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I thank you now, O Lord God, that you bless and keep your people in your precious name. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every one of us, both now and forevermore. 
in Jesus blessed name and the people of God said amen amen and amen well praise God thank you so much for joining us this morning um, so glad to have had you join us we trust and we believe and we know that you've been blessed until next time this is pastor Ricardo saying God bless you so good to have you join us till next time God bless you goodbye and God bless hallelujah keep walking by faith